So we've conquered SN2, we've learned about elimination, both E2 and E1, and we've even looked into you know, the ins and outs of SN1. It's time now to put it all together because sometime, at some point, someone is gonna give you a test and there's gonna be reactions as far as the eye can see and the big box of right or wrong is gonna be waiting for you to put the right answer in because you're gonna be able to decide whether a reaction is SN2, E2, SN1, or maybe even that minor E1 product if there's high temperature. Okay, so sorry for that dramatic intro, but seriously, we've learned a lot, guys, and you should never be concerned that you don't know how to categorize a reaction, whether it's one of these four, if no one tells you what it is. Remember, I know you can find charts on the internet where you can like, you know, it's like a grid, you can find, oh man, like this is what I should do based on my situation. But as long as you remember to check for these four things, and you've learned the concepts of behind all of these four reaction type mechanisms, we need to look for what degree substrate do we have, right? Is it methyl? Is it primary? Is it secondary? Is it tertiary? Do we have a good leaving group? We need to have that or else nothing's gonna happen. What kind of solvent do we have? Is it polar protic? Is it polar aprotic? And do we have a good nucleophile? Do we have a good base? Or does the thing we were given have the ability to be both a good nucleophile and a good base? That's where it gets a little hairy. But no worries, we're gonna do a bunch. This video is just gonna be, we're gonna do reaction after reaction, figuring out what you know the mechanism behind it is, whether it's this, 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 or this, and then predicting the product, right? Because all of these mechanisms have little extra things, little gotchas to, you know, to consider. Inversion of stereochemistry, anti-periplanar uh, considerations, gives us racemic mixtures, and eh, not so much with that. But you'll see, it's just gonna be reaction after reaction, and we're gonna get through this together. Okay, so given what we have right here, let's go through our checklist. Right here, our substrate, at this point, we got one bond of carbon, two bonds of carbon, three. This is a tertiary substrate. Iodine, it would be our leaving group, right? So I minus would be our leaving group. So we got a good leaving group. And what else? So we have this thing over the arrow, right? And maybe you've seen this before. If you ever see this, don't freak out. The AC stands for acetic. And here's how I always think about it, right? Acetic acid is a two carbon, uh, carboxylic acid, right? So anytime you see AC, it just means this piece right here with the carbonyl, right? And then whatever's attached, attached to it. So this is actually acetic acid, right? The AC just stands for this part right here. And you're gonna see that a lot through organic chemistry. So something to, you know, it's good to get used to it now. So we can see that our solvent is polar protic, right? It's definitely polar and we see this electronegative atom bonded to hydrogen. So we got a polar protic situation, and it's actually going to double up as a nucleophile. So given that we have a tertiary thing, tertiary substrate, uh, scientific word thing, good leaving group, polar protic solvent, not a good base, right? This is going to be SM1. Okay, SM1 is what we're dealing with. So now that we've categorized it, we need to successfully complete the product, complete the reaction, right? So think about whenever I do SN1. I like to just at least draw the initial carbocation I make, so I just do the solvolysis step. All right, so I'm going to make a carbocation at this position. So be careful. Remember, whenever we make a carbocation, right, we're losing this bond, so then we only have one, two, three bonds left. We then are trigonal planar, right? Our geometry changes from tetrahedral to trigonal planar, so we are no longer tetrahedral, we are now flat planar, right? So this, this dash is no longer a dash, it's in the plane with everything else, okay? So now we can show acetic acid attacking. And remember, the nucleophilic atom here is this oxygen. So I'm gonna draw the attack. And remember, since we are now trigonal planar and flat, attack is going to happen from above and below in equal amounts. So we are going to make a racemic mixture. So let me just initially draw the result of this. So I'm going to draw the dashed methyl group. Make this big enough. So if I come in from the top, acetic acid attached by the oxygen will be a wedge. And he will have a positive charge. 
So this is what we got. So if you just think about it, the only other thing I need to show is the other product, right? This is this is 50% of what we get. So let me show the other 50 by drawing this product. Uh, I'm just going to switch them. So the methyl group will be wedged. The acetic acid will now be dashed because they go, attack happens on top and bottom in equal amounts. These will be the two products. Obviously, I have not done the cleanup step yet. So if you wanted to, you know, to, if the big box of right and wrong is right here, I would draw, you can do this in two ways. I would draw OAC. These are just next to each other. Actually, let me even draw it like this. This will be a little bit cleaner. You can do this, and you could draw this, or you could write plus enantiomer. Because they only have one stereo center. They differ at that stereo center, so they are right and left hands of each other. Or if you want to be safe, draw this and draw the molecule. I'll just actually do it. Make the box bigger. You could just draw the wedge, or sorry, the, whoa, sorry, yep, the wedge methyl group. You just switch these, and then the dashed OAC. Okay, so a little bit of a tricky one, right? But it all came down to tertiary substrate, good leaving group. We looked at the arrow, polar product scenario, so good for forming carbocations, right? Good for cell volysis, and not a great base, right? Carboxylic acid, so it's just a weak nucleophile.